Good evening, everyone. Please remain standing for our national anthem, which is performed by our entire Conard Music Department. This, like all other musical selections this evening, was previously recorded. Please be seated. Good evening, and welcome to the 2021 Conard High School Commencement Ceremony. My name is Lindsay Tringali, and I'm an assistant principal here at Conard High School. I am truly thrilled to be here this evening. I've been an administrator at Conard High School for five years, and I remember this class in particular walking shyly into the building on their first day through the gauntlet of staff and faculty members there to welcome them. I truly cannot believe it's been four years. Therefore, it's both an honor and pleasure to be a part of this class's graduation ceremony and witness these students cross the stage and receive their well-earned diplomas. At this moment, we will hear another musical recording this time of our senior choir members as they sing the Conard alma mater. Thank you, Mr. Yurik, our choir director, Ms. Wattel, our band director, and the directors of our orchestra program, Mr. Drake and Ms. McSweeney, for all of your hard work on the preparation and recordings of the musical selections this evening. Pomp and Circumstance was played by the Conard bands and orchestras, and the national anthem was performed by the full Conard music department. These were recorded separately, class by class, over multiple days, and then mixed together. This has been no easy feat. I also think it's vital to thank the students in the Conard High School choirs and bands and orchestras for their work, flexibility, and perseverance in practicing, performing, and recording the music for this evening. Please, let's give them all a round of applause. Before we continue with our festivities, I have a few housekeeping notes. Please make sure that you're seated in the correct area. A bracelet is required to sit in the designated ceremony seating area as we have accounted for those seats. If you, have not, if you do not have a bracelet, feel free to sit behind the official uh, seating, uh, ceremony seating area. Also, please silence your cell phones. This would help us out immensely, as I've been told they may interfere with our sound system. Also, for those parents who wish to run front and center to photograph their child, 
While we completely understand your excitement, and we're excited too, we ask that you refrain, and I think your kids would too, as we have premier portraits taking professional pictures today. This will allow every student an opportunity to have an uninterrupted, shining moment and will allow you to sit back and take in the details of this special day. Pictures should be posted by tomorrow after 12 for you to peruse and order if you would like. Their ordering information is on the back of the program. While the weather seems to be currently stable, and I would hate to think that it could change, if the weather does not cooperate and the skies open, Students and all guests are to return to your cars. There are many people that we must thank because without them, this evening would not be what it is. While graduation planning in any year requires dedication, effort, and time, in the midst of a pandemic, it's that much more difficult. While I describe these efforts, I would ask that you please hold your applause until all groups and individuals are mentioned. Thank you to the main office, custodial staff, and plant services staff who have worked tirelessly on the logistics, both large and small. Connard staff, including security, faculty, chaperones, proctors, and junior class ushers who have helped to keep us all in order for this special occasion. Thank you to Abby Esposito and Nicole Nyland, our senior class advisors. They deserve a special thank you for the work they've done with their class this year. They're Help with the selection process for graduation speakers was invaluable, and without their planning and communication, we wouldn't have been able to hold a prom. Thank you to the central office administrative team represented this evening by Dr. Rosina Haskins and Dr. Andrew Morrow. Dr. Morrow is both here as a West Hartford Public Schools Assistant Superintendent for Administration, and perhaps more importantly this evening, as a proud parent of a graduate. Your support as a collective executive team of all of our schools, pre-K through 12, is unwavering. Always putting kids first. The West Hartford Public Schools Board of Education is here tonight, represented on stage with me by Ms. Deb Polin, who will be, we'll be hearing from shortly, and Mr. Mark Zydanowitz, who's in the audience. I'd also like to thank our mayor, Sherry Cantor, as well as other town dignitaries. Thank you for all of your support in our schools that help our students succeed. State Representative Kate Farrar from the 20th District is also joining us this evening. Thank you for joining us. Thank you to the West Hartford Police Department for their presence today and during the parade and to Premier Portraits and West Hartford Community Television for covering this event tonight. Thanks to West Hartford Community Television, it's currently being live streamed. Thank you to the Parent Volunteers and Safe Grad Planning Committee for all you do for our students and specifically for giving our students a special and safe way to bid farewell to their friends at Conard. Lastly, parents, grandparents, and other family and friends of the graduating class, thank you for helping our students get to this point. Please join me in giving all of these groups of people and individuals a round of applause. To officially welcome you, I would like to introduce the president of the senior class, Chloe Scrimger. Hi everyone, and welcome to the class of 2021's graduation commencement ceremony. My name is Chloe Scrimger, and I'm the senior class president. First, I wanna thank all of the family members, friends, and faculty who came here to support all of us graduates today. And a special thanks to Principal Duarte and our assistant principals, Ms. Tringali, Mr. Hines, and Mr. Fisk for everything they have done for us during our time here at Conard. And to my fellow seniors, congrats, we made it. This year has been like no other, definitely not the senior year that any of us were expecting or hoping for. But instead of focusing on what this year wasn't, let's focus on what it was. We made the most of the opportunities we were given and learned to adapt to all of the obstacles thrown our way remote learning, mask wearing, safety protocols, all new challenges we faced together as seniors, and we were up to the task. Having beaten COVID-19, I am confident that each and every one of the graduates sitting here today will have the courage and tenacity to overcome any obstacle, whether it be in college or in the workplace. The West Hartford School District has not only trained us well, but has also provided us with countless experiences and helped us form lasting relationships. 
I know I can speak on behalf of the whole class when I say that we are so grateful to have been part of such an amazing community over the years. Speaking of people who have made our community thrive, at this time, I would like to introduce our principal, Mr. Duarte. Good evening and welcome parents, grandparents, family, friends, and distinguished guests to Conard High School's 64th graduation ceremony. I would like to thank you for joining us this evening and for providing the support and guidance that has helped foster the success of all of our students over the years. Today, you, the Conard class of 2021, will walk across this stage, which symbolically acknowledges that you have met all the graduation requirements set forth by the West Hartford Board of Education. But it's really much more than that. This short 32-foot walk is an opportunity to celebrate all of the hard work, dedication, and perseverance that was required to attain this goal. And one could certainly argue that you deserve this special moment perhaps more than any other class. So do not forget to soak it all in. I hope at some point over the next few days that you take a few minutes to thank the various people in your life who have helped support you along the journey. Now, class of 2021, I know this is your special day, but I feel I would be remiss if I did not take a moment to sincerely thank the absolutely amazing staff here at Conard. Whether it was a red or a blue week, knowing what letter day Wacky Wednesday was, which stairwell went up or down, which hallway permitted two-way traffic, adjusting from hybrid 1.0 to 2.0, or whatever else came your way, you did your very best to keep teaching and learning going while making sure that every student was safe, cared for, and felt valued. Know that I am so proud of what we've accomplished this year. Can we all please give them a round of applause? I've always believed that one of the major keys to success is the ability to successfully deal with the challenges and adversities that we encounter along our journey called life. As the American author Sean Aker said, the most successful people see adversity not as a stumbling block, but as a stepping stone to greatness. Without a doubt, you have shown a remarkable ability to do this. Despite all of the obstacles that life threw your way, over the last 15 months, you have continued to not only persevere, but you have shined brightly in the face of adversity on your way to greatness. I hope that you know how extremely proud I am of all that you accomplished during your time here at Conard. As principal, I want to personally thank you for continuing the amazing reputation that we have built and maintained over the years, and for displaying trust in me and the entire West Hartford Public School System. Whether you realize this or not, we are all the authors of our own story. And as we have certainly seen over the last few months, inevitably, things will occur that are out of our control. But the real question is, how will you respond to these events? This can be even harder when you know that no one is watching. But again, how will you respond? And next time you're writing a chapter in your story, if you start to think about what you can't do, I want you to stop. Stop and think about all that you have accomplished and overcome to get here today. All of you embraced the challenge, as formidable as it was, and pushed yourself to take risks and continue to propel forward. Because of that, today you are rewarded. As you continue to write your story, recognize that life will be extremely busy. But I implore you to not let it just fly by, or perhaps even worse, to wish the days away. Instead, stop and enjoy the things that matter. They say you don't know what you've got till it's gone. I believe this is a good reminder to cherish every moment that you get. That means with family, with friends, and do not take anything for granted. That is surely one of the things I was reminded of over the last few months. Lastly, I beg you to fill your book with acts of kindness and love. We know that everyone's journey is different, but we also know that all human beings want to be loved, seen, and heard, and that everyone carries some type of invisible burden around with them. 
So as you close this chapter in your story and begin working on the next, I want to remind you that even the smallest kind gesture can make a big difference in someone's life. Connor Class of 2021, thank you for an incredible four years. I wish you good health and good luck with all of your future endeavors. And remember that you are the sole author of your story, so be sure to write it the way you want. Thank you. At this time, it is my pleasure to introduce a good friend of mine who has the privilege of being not only the assistant superintendent for administration, but more importantly, a proud father to one of our graduating seniors, Dr. Andrew Morrow. Good evening. It's my privilege to be here tonight to welcome all of you and to congratulate all of our graduates on behalf of the superintendent of schools and our executive team. I was going to put this all in an email to you about six o'clock or so, but I thought you've probably had enough of that from me this year, so here we go. To our graduates, while I'm here tonight representing our district, I'm also a dad, and I wanna take some time to speak to you on behalf of all of your loved ones that are gathered here tonight, and to tell you how exceptionally, unabashedly proud we are of you. Congratulations on all your successes, and you should be proud that the long hours have paid off. Through all of the good, through all of the not so good, we love you, and we can't wait to see what your next chapters bring. You'll hear a lot this year of how this was a unique year, of how your perseverance through the pandemic has led you to this day and to this achievement. And while this is true, this year and this challenge is a small piece of your experience and certainly not the defining part of who you are as individuals. You are so much more than the class who spent your senior year in the pandemic. And while this has been a challenge for you and for your families and for all of our community, I hope that it fades to just a footnote in your lives and one day you tell your own children about your senior year, and they will then look at you glassy-eyed and bored like you look at us when we talk about the struggles growing up with rotary phones. <laughs> so instead of focusing on this year alone, the family and friends here have been a part of your journey for 18 years, and these relationships and the bonds that you've made with each other are what have led you to tonight and will continue to guide you forward. I've had the privilege of knowing many of you since your first days of school. And what to you feels like a lifetime ago, to your parents feels like yesterday. I remember you lining up at Duffy, waiting to go to your new classrooms. Some of you more adventurous than others. And when a new student was scared, I remember the simple gesture of a classmate quietly stepping up taking her hand and walking side by side with her into a new school. Your teachers and your families have seen this kindness and compassion repeated over the years in so many ways. And this is what defines you and what you should take away from West Hartford. I hope you focus and treasure the years of friendships and a foundation of caring for each other I hope you leave Connard with lifelong friends, people you can always call on in good times and in bads. And instead of focusing on this year's struggles, I hope your memories are from the classrooms, the concerts, the musicals, and the playing fields over all of these years. Traditionally, graduation speeches are meant to impart wisdom or provide guidance as you head off on new adventures. I, I don't presume to have either of these to share with you, as I'm sure my daughter would gladly, con gladly confirm, but I'd like to leave you with an idea and with a challenge. It's human nature that over time, we tend to focus on what we do well and what we're successful at. This is particularly true in high school, and for many of you, this focus has brought you to where you are today and may continue to bring you success in the years ahead. But if you only focus on what you're successful at, you miss out on the real joys of life, 
the hobbies and the passions that make us interesting and make life worthwhile. One of the things we don't tell students enough in school is that it's okay to do something just because you love it, especially when it's something that you're never going to win awards for or that will never show up on your college application. So my challenge to you as you leave us is to love something that you're not good at. Embrace a passion that you're mediocre at best in art, music, sport, or language. Push yourself to join a new club or an activity, something that intrigues, excites, and even terrifies you a little bit. And if you love it, keep doing it, regardless of success. You may never master it, but it will bring you happiness and it will open so many doors. These are the kind of things that surprise you and add to your life. And as you leave us, continue to find your voice and use it to lift up others, not for self-promotion or denigration. It's easy to be loud and point out a problem, especially online. But we often confuse shouting with engagement. While the real work, the lasting change, comes from listening, understanding, and compromise. Do the real work. It's a lot harder, but at the end, it's the only thing that really matters. And finally, I'm not going to tell you to limit your time online. You'll eventually figure that out yourself. But it would be great if you took time to occasionally text, call, and FaceTime your parents. Let us know you're okay, and cut us some slack as we get used to you moving on. It's going to be tough on us to let you go, but we know you're ready, we know it's time. Congratulations, good luck, and be safe. It is now my great pleasure to introduce the chairperson of the West Hartford Board of Education, Deb Poland. Thank you, and good afternoon, everyone. Assistant Superintendent Morrow, Dr. Haskins, Principal Duarte, teachers, staff, family, friends, and graduates of the Conard High School class of 2021. It is my pleasure to have the honor to address you today on behalf of the West Hartford Board of Education. And before I continue on, I want to acknowledge my colleague from the Board of Education who is here today, Mark Zdanowitz, and our state representative, Kate Farrar. Welcome. When I was considering what I wanted to share with you today, on top of you hearing from Dr. Morrow, Mr. Duarte, Chloe, Tolu, and Kayla, and Mr. Lucier, I considered the words of your fellow student, Rushil Urabelli, who represented you all year as the stu Conard Student Representative to the Board of Education. Hi, Rushil, you out there somewhere? At our board meeting two weeks ago, Rushil said this, this year is a year where it's easy to give up, but to have persisted and to have lessons learned like independence, but also compassion, and empathy, and really understanding people, and this idea of togetherness are lessons that we all can really bring with us in the future. Now this is me again. I love that idea, the idea that this year, this year without much precedent, and which we hope is not repeated, we all hope that, right, has in some ways helped us to become better people that through all of these changes to how we deliver education and learn, and how we interact with each other, and how we learn to sit with ourselves, that we have not given up, but have persisted, that we have learned to value both independence and togetherness, and that we've all grown in our compassion and empathy. Now, back in BC, before COVID, I already thought you all were special. One way your generation shines is through action. 
I have watched you from your youngest years sell homemade slime to raise money for causes and volunteer your time with people in need, attend rallies and marches, and organize rallies and marches, write letters to your elected officials, and use social media to share your messages and others that inspire you. You have already made our community better. And I hope your years with the West Hartford Public Schools have nurtured those instincts and fostered those actions. Now, as you bring forward your activities from throughout your lives, combined with the lessons you've learned in school for the past 13 years, and these lessons of persistence, of independence and togetherness, of compassion and empathy, I think I speak for all of the adults here today that we're not just confident in your future, but excited to see the changes you bring to improve your own community of people and the broader communities as well. So while I'm at it, as the elected official who gets to speak today, I'll make a pitch for your involvement in your government. I hope that many of you here today, students and families, are registered to vote. Yes? Give me a little thumbs up, thank you. If not, please get registered as soon as you're eligible and then use that right responsibly. Get educated about candidates and vote in your local, state, and federal elections. And when you're ready, run for office. One of you might be here addressing a future Conard graduating class or addressing our state, our nation, or the world. Congratulations on all your achievements so far and may you go forward from our schools and from this year with persistence, compassion, empathy, independence, and togetherness. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Bolin. We'll now hear our senior choir um, in their performance of The Road Home, composed by Stephen Paulus. Before hearing their recording, though, we felt it was important for the graduates, families, and other guests to hear the beautiful lyrics to provide a context for the piece's meaning. Tell me where is the road I can call my own that I left that I lost so long ago. All these years I have wandered, oh, when will I know? There's a way, there's a road that will lead me home. After wind, after rain, when the dark is done, as I wake from a dream in the gold of day, through the air, there's a calling from far away. There's a voice I can hear that will lead me home. Rise up, follow me. Come away is the call. With the love in your heart as the only song, there is no such beauty as where you belong. Rise up, follow me, I will lead you home. Now that I have shared the lyrics, I would like to share the recording.
You will now be hearing from two senior class speakers this evening. They've worked hard on preparing and perfecting the content of their message to you with feedback from one of our English teachers, Mrs. Natalie Leek, and also under the direction of our theater teacher, Mrs. Kareen Kravitz, as she gave them feedback on their performance and delivery. I'm really excited to present to you your first senior class speaker, Kayla Usman. I used to be shy, painfully shy, really, like hide behind my mom whenever I was in public and cry type of shy. It's taken me a long time to get out of my own way and, like many people, feel confident and proud of being myself. My sophomore year, I took AP seminar. This is a class where you have to be very comfortable in your own opinions and intelligence. I vividly remember one of our first assignments. We had to research something, write information down on a three by five index card, then present that information to the class. Although I seemed overconfident at the time, I was dying inside. But with shaking knees and hands, I walked to the front of the classroom and delivered my subpar presentation. Then each of my classmates presented, just as awkwardly as I had. Looking back on that moment, I'm proud of myself, and I'm proud of my classmates. As little as that assignment may have been, it was a big deal at the time. 15-year-olds presenting to other 15-year-olds. Can't you just feel the awkwardness? So yeah, as silly as it may be, I'm proud of my AP seminar class. I mean, pride, right? You can't be involved in Conard's community and not realize how important pride is. Conard Pride must be said by Mr. Duarte alone at least a hundred times every day. On the first day of freshman year, we have to walk in the building through a tunnel of teachers clapping and cheering for us. Super embarrassing, right? But if the hallways lined with your future teachers cheering you on isn't the epitome of pride, I don't know what is. In some ways, it's really easy to put your finger on where Conard shows its pride. The cheering section at football games, the standing ovation at the musical. However, we show school pride in less obvious ways too. We have also been taught that part of being proud of yourself, your peers, and your school is challenging yourself and others to be better. In recent years, Discussions have become arguments, and disagreements have felt unsolvable. Everyone has felt polarization and distance in one way or another. And when the distance became physical, things felt bleak. We have been challenged more than ever to advocate for each other in the face of unimaginable injustice and separation. However, when we reunited as almost an entire class for the first time in a year, the distance seemed to close a little. Yes, physically six feet, but when I got to wait for my best friend outside of her class and then leisurely walk to the third floor together, I felt the distance get smaller. Then seeing people I hadn't seen in a year, it got smaller. Seeing friend groups reunite, it got smaller. Staying after school, it got smaller. Over the past year, I have watched my peers speak out listen, learn, and comfort each other in more creative and thoughtful ways than ever before. We grew into these roles, all while enduring the unthinkable. More than ever, I am grateful to be in a school where the people around me are not afraid of change and hard discussions. My classmates and I have become mature, intelligent, and yes, proud people because of the community we have here. We have fostered hard conversations, found creative solutions to problems, and learned from each other. We have grown the understanding that part of being proud of ourselves and our community is holding each other accountable, never settling for anything less than progress and justice. As we go on in our very proud lives, we must continue to fight on the side of justice and accountability. 
We are more than fortunate to have been at a school where diversity is celebrated and conversation is always welcome. At Conard, we have lived with good pride. However, it would be naive if I did not address evil pride, the superiority type of pride which for generations has plagued our society. The distinction between these attitudes is crucial as one has pushed people to the margins of our society, fostered fascism, and created a hateful world. The other is used to uplift yourself and those around you. It creates spaces where we can express ourselves freely and unconditionally. We must only engage in the latter. It is up to us to remove the supremacist pride from our communities. Everyone deserves to be unapologetically proud of who they are. We must bring our pride to, the, to those who have had theirs taken. Let's fight for those who have been silenced and hurt by a system which claims to be on their side. I am confident that we each will help others realize their pride, that none of us will stop until each person we encounter feels equal and represented. Class of 2021, I hope we all continue to have unbelievable amounts of pride in ourselves. Thank you and congratulations. The next speaker and I have crossed paths a lot in the past 10 years, including sharing the stage as the leads in our fifth grade play. I'm happy to share the stage again with Tolu Adetola. Thank you, Kayla. There was a day I remember very distinctly a year and a few months ago, the sun was absolutely bussing, the breeze immaculate. I was out on that turf field working out with my football team. Hope, determination, and excitement filled our atmosphere as we sweat, bled, and believe it or not, cried as a family. Yes, I was a uh, common culprit. But upon checking our phones afterwards, we jumped and cheered in jubilation to the news that we'd officially been given an extra two week spring break due to some glorified flu 2.0 being flown in from God knows where, stealing all the press like a foreign superstar. Indubitably, we did the only thing we could do, which was to blast pop smoke at hazardously loud levels and pile into the vans and drive off. I'm practically fighting off a disruption of peace charge every time I'm with them, but what else could you expect from a bunch of 16-year-old meatheads? I'm sure everyone in here in front of me has a story of that day as well, but the thing they all have in common is that we all felt elevated to some extent. Shocked, yes, but carefree. The fear that was to befall us all within the next two weeks had yet to arrive and the fear of my AP teachers losing oh so valuable instruction time brought true euphoria to my heart. <laughs> There's something similar about today that brings me back. Hope, determination, and excitement fill this very atmosphere. It's in your eyes and it's in our souls. Excitement about the worlds ahead of us and hope for the enjoyment of what our lives will have to offer as safety starts to replace the territory, fear, confusion, and uncertainty constantly held as residents rent-free. We all long for things to go back to how they were and accept some things will just be different for good. With the evolution of our online education, a spoon under your pillowcase and ice cubes down the toilet may never create the same snow day magic for our younger siblings or future children as it did for us. Whether that's actually acceptable to them at this point is kind of a they problem, so. However, whether we realize it or not, we've all changed for the better. It quickly dawned on us that our two weeks spring break prequel would be far from just that. And in the confinements of our own homes, we were forced to face ourselves. Over the course of the pandemic, some of us found ourselves. Some of us took this time to heal the mental states that had been beaten and battered by high school, while this same time caused others to unfortunately crumble. Some of us learned to love ourselves 
But more importantly, a lot of us learn to love each other. You never quite realize how much you long for something until it's gone. And when it was gone, we all longed for community. I was talking to a woman in Stop and Shop the other night. It was, it was near closing and there were no locatable workers in plain sight. She came up to me, a fellow shopper, and asked if I could help her find an ingredient she needed for a special recipe. And unable to drop my pride of being the most helpful man on earth, I said, of course, sure, I, I can help you. Immediately after that, I came to the realization that I had never actually heard of such a cultural ingredient and proceeded to <sighs> while looking up at the aisle labels. Think and speak tend to choose their own orders. While we browsed, she asked me about various things like school and college and discussed how we were both individually affected by the pandemic in different ways. I explained to her how each class had to face their own unique set of calamities, and she explained to me how the children she's worked with home lives had now ranged from catastrophic to untouched, often in correlation with their socioeconomic standings. The thought I took home with me and dwelled on that night was as so. We never quite really gauge the effects of the pandemic on each group, whether that be age, location, race, wealth, occupation, unless you're in it. Connor, class of 21, as a group, we have faced some serious effects to say the least. While our counselors were overwhelmed with their COVID modified duties, going through application season blinder than ever was a challenge we all rose up to and destroyed. It is believed that adversity creates maturity. And after our set of corona trials and tribulations, the maturity in this crowd here today, my friends, is unlike any class before us. We have learned to go beyond just tolerating one another, be true to ourselves, have difficult conversations on topics like Black Lives Matter, and tear down the bubble we exist in to see the world around us for what it is. We are able, finally able to see past football games, Tokes and Taylor's shed, boba tea, anime binging, and parties. We've embraced the complexity of life, and it's allowed us to embrace each other. As a class, we have set a new precedent for loving one another at Conard. And as our teachers and staff continue to catalyze this sense of community, we have left an example for the classes behind us to follow suit. Connor, class of 21, as you take this maturity with you into the world and make your mark around you, as your steps turn into strides, continue to be respectful, engaged, resilient, and above all, compassionate. Connor, class of 21, each of you as individuals has a level of character developed above that of any class before us. And I cannot wait to see you all show the world who we are. Thank you. The next speaker I would like to introduce is Mr. or to me, Coach Lucier. Although Coach Lucier and I practice and operate on opposite sides of the ball, it's become clear to me after my four years of working with him that he is someone who cares deeply for all his players at all times. Coach Lucier is a key component to our football team system and is someone who is strong on getting things done efficiently and precisely, but not at the emotional or physical expense of the players he is guiding. I never had Mr. Lucier as a teacher, but upon reaching out to students over social media to tell me about him in the classroom, the feedback was more than positive and very parallel. Students thank Mr. Lucier for his compassion and empathy. He's always ready to listen and adapt and puts the emotional well-being of his students first. A quote from a student read, Mr. Lucier manages to teach difficult content while managing the stress levels of everyone in the classroom. Like, I think he really does care about our mental health. There is no doubt in my mind why we have voted for him to be our teacher speaker. Thank you, Mr. Lucier. It's wonderful to see all of you. And Tolu, I was doing fine until you did that, and now I'm a little, so thank you for that.
There's a few people in the audience I'd like to acknowledge before we get going. Uh, my mother, Karen, and for the record, not that Karen. Um, my, my wife, Jenny, my son, Owen, my daughter, Tessa, and thank you guys for always appreciating me being me. And Chris Islob for helping me with the speech. And also, if anyone has any problems with the speech, it's Chris underscore Islob at WPA.org. I'm sorry. That joke was old. That joke's so old, it can collect Social Security. All right. Let's move on. Before I get into the speech, let me address the thought inhibiting all of your minds. How long is this guy going to talk? Short speeches make for long friendships. Let's do this. I'm going to talk about being yourself, what says me better than a visor. I'm grateful that you as a class have invited me to share in a special moment in your lives. We have arrived at this current moment as a collective whole because we have shared many moments together individually. We connected and created a bond formed of trust and honesty. The reason we were able to make those meaningful connections is because I am one of you. I was the kid who struggled academically in school. Damn it, Tolu. <laughs> I was the kid who got in trouble and had a seat of honor in the uh, main office. My vice principal and I were on a first name basis. His name was George. <laughs> I was the kid whose only motivation oftentimes to come to school so I could go to football practice. <laughs> I was a lonely kid who wanted a more robust social life. Whenever I make a reference to an event of the past and say, I am dating myself, it not only is an, alludes to a point in time, it refers to my social life in high school as well. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure there's a couple emails coming for that one. All right. However, I was also the kid who mustered the courage to take an AP course my senior year. Straight A's in AP US history. I only got a two on a test, though. Uh, but we know. The test is not the only measure of success in an AP class. I was the kid that needed every second of my four years in high school to figure it out. So when I spoke to all of you, I was really seeing a reflection and speaking to a former version of myself. I felt your anxiety, fear, frustration, angst, joy, and happiness. I have a quote in my room from Paul Simon's Kodachrome. When I think back on all the crap I learned in high school, it's a wonder I can think at all. That's there to remind me that my job is about people, not about information. My primary objective in teaching is focusing on conveying ways for you guys to take what you learn in class and apply it in real life. So what can I pass along to you while we're all here in this outdoor classroom? Simply be yourself. It's the one thing no one can take away from you. This sounds simple, but being yourself takes an incredible amount of courage because people are going to try and convince you to be something other than yourselves. They're going to point out all the reasons why you cannot be you and why you cannot do what you want to do. When you have the courage to be yourself, the obstacles will fade away and all you will see is a clear path to your bright future. I'm standing in front of you because I refuse to allow anyone to talk me out of being myself. My mother and I talk about this frequently. She still sees the same person as a 46-year-old that I am now as I was as a 14-year-old boy. Her version is it's me sticking to my virtues and never wavering from my vision. My wife is convinced I'm good at my job is because I never matured past 14. Matter of perspective. By having the courage to be myself and not deviating from my path, has allowed me to achieve every goal I have set out for myself. Go to college, play football, check. Graduate college, check. Become a college football coach, check. Switch careers, master's degree, check, check. And finally, land a job at a wonderful place, triple check. But look at me. Honestly, would you pick me out of the room as the successful guy? No. 
I'm convinced that my courage to be myself has led me to the successes I have achieved. To find the courage to be yourself, you have to identify your areas of interest. Many people say follow your passions, but it's vague and a bit irresponsible. Mark Cuban, the owner of the Dallas Mavericks of the NBA, suggests substituting the word effort for passion. Follow your effort. This makes it more tangible. What activities do you put your effort into? Are you behind a sketchbook? Are you tapping out a code on a keyboard? Is it when you're serving and helping others? Is it when you're under the hood of a car, on the stage performing? These are activities no one has to tell you to do. You wake up every day and immediately have the, mo the motivation to pursue these areas of interest. For me, my effort goes into three areas. Discovering new knowledge, seeking out personal connections with people, and wait for it, football. No one has to tell me to watch more film of my opponents. No one has to force me to seek out new strategies for leadership or more information on brain science and learning. No one has to tell me to stop and talk to somebody and ask how they're doing. In fact, it's the opposite. I have to force myself not to do these things. My family and I go out, my daughter frequently inquires, are you gonna stop and talk to everyone today? With that perfect blend of snark, sympathy, and sarcasm that only a 13-year-old girl can have, it's perfect. Or when my son sees me at my computer and says, Dad, let me guess, watching more film? These are the areas I naturally gravitate towards. I was fortunate. I found my efforts early. I've always enjoyed people, football, and learning. I realize now that I was the exception and not the rule. It takes most people a while to discover their efforts and then have the courage to develop them. So don't panic. If you don't know where your efforts are just yet, my wife, who is way smarter and a way better teacher than me, that's what stinks about my house. No matter what I get, she's already done it and I'm not even the best teacher in my own house. She didn't know what she wanted to do till she was 29, till she switched career paths from being a successful teacher to an outstanding library media specialist. I love my life. If I put my efforts into being something other than myself, I would not have the life of fulfillment I currently enjoy. I will finish where I began by expressing my gratitude for being allowed to share this special moment with you. We are forever connected by sharing this space and this moment together. Our final moment together has come to an end. However, our journey together towards discovering and developing the best versions of ourselves and ultimately finding fulfillment in our lives has just begun. Class of 2021, be courageous. Mr. Lucier, thank you for sharing your words and thoughts with all of us. I know I said this the other day via email and I even said it as we were walking out this afternoon, but I wanted to tell you in person in front of everybody here that it really is your honesty, your genuine interest in others and ability to be vulnerable, to learn and grow. Are, they're just the characteristics that I admire most about you. Your speech today demonstrates these qualities and as you said, this shows tremendous courage. So thank you. We are now gonna begin with the presentation of diplomas. The names of the graduates will be read by our school counselors, Greg Ferry, Adam Linker, Don Hoblett, Karen Mortensen, Kristen Mangini, and Bob Segui. During the presentation, I will ask that you, the audience members, please remain in your seats and refrain from applause until all students have received their diplomas. This will give each student their special moment as both the graduates and family of the graduates can hear all the names being read. Mr. Ferry will be our first reader.
Christopher Adams. Marissa Adams. Tolu Adetolo. Jose Augusto. Alistair Alejos. Brianna Alexander. Emma Alford. Jaden Alisea. Madeline Altman. Jesse Amchok. Richard Aponte. Grace Mary Araya. Elizabeth Arcan. Madeline Elsie Arcand. Joshua Ardone. Charles Arnold. Molly Aubrey. Marlena Michelle Bailey. Isabella Maria Balta. Eden Barnard. Kastu Bastnet. Dominic Bavaro. Isaiah Bell. Mai Benita. Xavier Benito Benitez Matos. Chase Benkiki. Ajasi Bent. Sean Bernard. Aaron Borla. Alexander Bodis. Elijah Brites. Damon Broge. Peter Brown. Siobhan Brown. Griffin Charles Bruce. Lucy Elizabeth Buccilli. Emery Budak. Matthew Burnett. Sarah Burnett. Isabel Jane Burnett Herkes. Connor Burns. Rachel Burtness. Purit Budaspak. Gabriel Cadet. John Calcaterra. Anastasia Caldwell. Clayton Campbell. Alexander Thomas Canero. Erica Amelia Kengro. Cassidy Cannon. David Cantarella. Mercedes Cow. Mary Capone. Sophie Caps Hawkins. Angela Carabello. Jackson Carbone. Jacob Karen. Jonathan Cassiano Jr. Nathaniel Cavo. 
Mason Chabot. Courtney Chamberlain. Talitha Channer. Daniel Chavez. Eileen Chen. Jerry Chen. Yu Chen Chen. Jordan David Sherry. Mara Ann Cicchetti. Christina Coburn. Emmett Christian Coco. Benjamin Marcel Cohn Tyler. Devante Tyler Cole. Terrell Collins. Eliza Isabella Colon. Destiny Lizette Colon. Camille Kate Corrado. Benjamin Zev Covici. Austin Crossley. Ashley Lynn Cugno. Isadora De Silva Arsenego. Michael Carl DeAndrea. Malik Khalil Daniels Montez. Maeve Darcy. Kieran Davis. Francisco Chave D'Amato. Alexandra Lee Diaz. Ali Sneles de Jesus. <laughs> Natalie Ian de la Cruz. <laughs> Elijah Evan del Castillo. Akshay Diodat. <laughs> Nina Elizabeth de Vries. John Doe. Michael Van Doan. Trisha Daru. Briley Drummy. Ingrid Marie Dynowski. Nicholas Garza Eckett. Ruth Avril Eddy. Avery Marie Edelman. Alice Jean Evelyn. Ariana Zina Fendozi. Jacob Edward Farrell. Isaiah Monet Felder. Talia A. Feliciano. Jonathan Charles Ferrucci. Randy Figueroa Acevedo. Noah Evan Phil. Colin Patrick Flaherty. Rebecca Fleischman. Mara Doyle Fletcher. Baron Marcus Francis. 
Francica Francis. Jaden Fuller. Juliana Gagliardi. Bianca Azoria Gator. Luis Alfonso Galarza. Lillian Dorothy Gallinato. Annie Catherine Garrick. Madison Monique Garrett. James Ryan Gaston. Namar Chance Gaynor. Alua Toby, Joshua Batabo. <laughs> Katrina Ann Jenka. Antoine Patrick Gibson. Elena Lauren Gold. Richard Gomes. Evan Maxwell Gordon. Molly Naughton Gorman. Aaron Wynn Gruber. Alexandra Marie Guerrero. Claudia Isabella Gugliotti. Emma Golan. Janish Guru. Ariana Gutierrez. Samuel Thomas Hamill. Benjamin Martin Hardesty. Samuel Mason Hardesty. Gabriel Hartford Martinez. Colette Haverty. McGuire Hawksby Mullins. Patrick Allen Hemingway. Brendan Michael Hill. Michael Allen Hill. Titum Nu Huen. Matthew Israel Hook. Ariana Hopaya Rios. Elena Marie Huber. Alexandra Rachel Hudson. Abigail June Hughes. Evan David Idelson. Hanif Antonio Jackson Jr. Madeline Grace Jacobowski. Angel Jacquez. Ava Elizabeth Johnson. Minu Kaluklum Matthews. David James Kendall. Jayont Karaturi. Eleanor Khan. Down with the patriarchy. Yes, it is. <laughs> Julia Louise Kiernan. Alan Harper Kim. Ella Kimberly. Nina Kate Kleskevich. Alexander Nicholas Kanapka. Charles Joseph Daniel Kreitch. Emma Grace Kramer. 
Chanadi Krishna Prasad, Baden Christ, Charles Stephen Christofak, Declan Kutcher, Scott Donald LaBranch, Elizabeth Grace Lamarco, Maxwell Langweil, Spencer Langweil, Benjamin David Larkin, Mason Anthony Lasala, Lexis Loretta, Jason Lau. Skylin Macy, Sandy Lee, V. Kang Lee, Sinceri Antoinette Grace Leapart, Barbara Ann Leonard, Margaret Elizabeth Leonard, George Edwin Lyndon Leonard IV, Noah Mason Lerner, Madeline Julia Levesque. Sydney May Liotti, Moila Lingashi, Joseph Anthony Lorenzo, Cassie Lo Cho Lee, Jack Evans Lubin. <laughs> 